Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, clases. Espero que estén bien. Este, hoy vamos a estar discutiendo los pronombres de objeto directo en español, tanto como en inglés. Uh, today we're going to be discussing direct object pronouns in Spanish and in English. Um, we've already learned some direct object pronouns, but today we're going to be learning these three. Me, te, nos. To say who receives the action of a verb. Let's get right into it. So the direct object of a sentence answers the question, who or what receives the action of the verb in that sentence? So el objeto directo responde a la pregunta, ¿Quién o qué recibe la acción del verbo de la oración? Fijémonos en este ejemplo. Let's check out this example. He kicks the can. Muy, very simple sentence. Um, muy básica la oración. He is my subject of this sentence because he's the one who's doing the action of the verb. He's the one who's doing the kicking. Él es la persona que patea. He's the kicker. The can, la lata, es lo que recibe la acción de la oración. The can is who or what he kicks in this sentence. So can, la lata, is the direct object. Can es el objeto directo de esta oración. ¿Por qué? Porque recibe la acción. Él patea la lata. He kicks the can. It receives the action of that kick. In English, just like in Spanish, we replace our direct object with a direct object pronoun. So in English, tanto como en español, reemplazamos el objeto directo muchas veces con un pronombre de objeto directo. What does this mean? I'm going to explain it to you in a story. Um, I went to the store. I bought a can. I dropped the can and I broke the can. The can fell down a hill and the can ended up at the bottom of the hill. I just told you a story and I repeated the word can maybe five or six times. Um, normally, that would sound a little bit weird. I would just say, I went to the store and I bought a can. I dropped it, I kicked it, I broke it, and it ended up at the bottom of a hill. That it, you know, is referring back to the can that I said four times. Um, that's a direct object pronoun. So it's how can I say it, him, her, you, me. In Spanish, uh, direct object pronouns go in front of the conjugated verb or attached to the back of the infinitive. And we'll discuss that uh, in just a second. Vamos a ver. Estos son los pronombres de objeto directo que ya sabemos. These are the ones that we already know. Ya sabemos. We already know. Lo, him, it, you. La, her, it, or you. Los or las, them, or you all, or you guys. Hay tres más. There are three more. Me. Me is going to mean me. It's going to mean I am the one receiving the action of the sentence. Yo soy la persona que recibe la acción. Te va a ser you. You are the one who receives the action of the verb. And then nos, just like nosotros, is going to be us. We receive the action of the verb. Vamos a ver un par de ejemplos, porque creo que eso lo va a aclarar un poquito. Estos son los ejemplos. These are my examples. Um, example number one. Él me ayuda. Who's the person doing the action? ¿Quién es la persona que hace la acción? Pues, él. He, right? He's the one who's doing the helping. Ayuda es el verbo. Helping is helping is my verb. So he is helping. ¿A quién está ayudando? Who is he helping? Who's the person receiving the action of the help? That's my direct object. Me. So my direct object pronoun in this case is me. Why? Because I'm the one receiving the action of that verb. Note that the syntax, la sintaxis cambia. It changes. In English, I put me after the verb. He is helping me. In English, lo pongo después. He is helping me. En español, lo pongo enfrente del verbo. In Spanish, I put it in front of the verb. El me ayuda. Este me me dice que yo soy la persona que recibe la acción del verbo. Let's check out number two. Me tells me that I'm the one that receives the action of the help. Yo te llamé. Ahí pueden ver. There you can see. Who's the person who did the calling? Pues yo. Me. I. I called. Yo llamé. Who did I call? You. So I need to put a direct object to replace, to, to tell me who receives the action of the verb. Yo te llamé. I called you. Right? You received the action of my call. Vos recibiste mi llamada. Ellos nos vieron. Now you can see, el sujeto siempre va enfrente, al inicio de la oración. The subject always goes in the beginning of the sentence. Ellos, they. That's my subject. 
They saw. Ellos vieron. They saw. In English, I put my direct object pronoun afterwards. Us. In Spanish, I put it right before that conjugated verb. Ellos nos vieron. They saw us. Nos vieron. Ana va a llamarme. She is going to call me. Note here I can put this at the end of this basic verb. Ana va a llamar me. Ana is going to call me. Check back here. In front of the conjugated verb or attached to the infinitive, which is my basic verb, right? So, Ana va a llamarme, I put it at the end attached to that basic infinitive verb. Lo pongo allí después. El del verbo infinitivo. Now, I could also say this sentence in a different way. I could say, Ana me va a llamar. Ana is going to call, and then me would be in front of va a. Both those sentences mean exactly the same thing. Ana is going to call me. Ana is going to call me. Looking at just a couple more examples really quick. Lucas, te hablo por teléfono anoche. Who's the person that spoke? Lucas. Lucas spoke. Lucas spoke. Por teléfono, by the phone. Lucas spoke. Who did he speak with? Te hablo. Te hablo. Lucas spoke with you on the phone yesterday or by phone yesterday, last night, anoche. Lucas te habló por teléfono anoche. Lola me lleva a mí a la ciudad. Lola is my person doing the action. Ella, el sujeto. Eh, lleva is el verbo. That's my verb. Lola takes. Who does she take? Me. Lola me lleva a la ciudad. Lola takes me to the city. Nuestros amigos nos esperan ahí. Our friends wait for us. Nos esperan ahí. Our friends are waiting for us there. Or our friends wait for us there. And then we'll go to number three as our last example. Yo los busqué ayer. Who's the person who did the action? I am. Yo. Yo busqué, I looked for. What did I look for? Los, or who did I look for? Them, right? Yo los busqué, I looked for them ayer, yesterday. I looked for them yesterday. So I hope that this lesson makes a little bit of sense for you guys. Uh, we have to think who or what is the person or thing that receives the action of the verb. And then how could I put a pronoun in for that? So how could I say him or it or you or them in that context. So tenemos que pensar quién es la persona que recibe la acción del verbo y o qué, qué es la cosa que recibe la acción del verbo y cómo podría reemplazar esa persona o ese coso, esa cosa con un pronombre de objeto directo. ¿Por qué es pronombre de objeto directo? Porque la cosa o la persona que recibe no es el sujeto, no es la persona o la cosa, o la cosa que hace la acción. So this is not the subject. Subjects normally come at the beginning of a sentence, like Lola, yo, tú, Elena, and then la banda. I hope that this has helped you out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to to get back to you. Uh, and, and, you know, it takes a little bit of practice. You're welcome to do these six as a practice. Um, circle the subject, underline the verb, and draw an arrow on that DOP, that direct object pronoun, the person or thing that receives the action of the verb. So, espero que esto les haya ayudado un poquito. Si tienen otras preguntas, me las dejan en los comentarios y yo con mucho gusto lo, se los respondo. Espero que tengan un buen día. Cuídense mucho. Guys, have a good day. Pura vida.